Poonam. So today we're gonna do uh, another one of my favorite dishes and it, it is kind of a favorite for most, but it is a street food from Mumbai, which is in Maharashtra. And it's a historical food. They used to use it for lunch for uh, mine workers and now it's an actual staple in restaurants everywhere. So the name of the dish today is Pam Bhaji. And basically what that is, it's just a mixed vegetable curry with lots of spices, really good. Uh, traditionally, it takes a lot of steps. Uh, when my parents used to make it, we had to steam everything separately and it was this huge process. This handy dandy Instant Pot doesn't make it a huge process. So there was some feedback that people wanted me to see cooking in real time and not having everything prepped so we can actually see how long it takes. This dish does not take very long with this pot and you're gonna see that I'm gonna cut up everything really rough, nothing precise, but we're gonna go ahead and get started so that you know how to start. So first thing, what we want to do is review our ingredients. Again, our recipe is going to be below the video, so you'll get to catch everything with measurements. So we're going to start with the spices. You're going to have two tablespoons of butter, three to four cloves of garlic, depending on how strong you like it, two tablespoons of cumin with one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two tablespoons of chili powder, two tablespoons of salt. Again, this is also gonna be per taste, so you can add or decrease however you'd like. And then we have four tablespoons of Badsha Bambaji mix, and you can find that at the Indian store. And I will show you that what that looks like in just a few seconds. We also have about five medium tomatoes. You can use Roma tomatoes, and the, the recipe will show you variations of that. We're gonna use four peeled medium-sized potatoes. We're gonna use half a head of cauliflower, one lemon hiding behind there, one fourth of a bunch of cilantro, and half a cup of frozen peas. And so we're gonna go in order on how to make this and that way no one misses a step and I'll talk the whole way so you know what to do and what to push on the Instapot. All right, so to get started, what you're first gonna do is you're gonna turn on the Instapot. We're gonna use different types of functions today, different than the mug. So we're gonna go from to do saute. That's how we're gonna do the onions and tomato mix. So we're gonna go to saute. We're gonna definitely um, make sure that there's no time so you really don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the butter in and we're gonna let that melt. While that melts, I usually just start cutting the onion. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. I didn't go to culinary school. This is just my practice. So we're just gonna cut it in. Now I remember growing up, my parents and my mom and my aunts would be like, you're not cutting it right, they're all different sizes. And this pot allows you to have all the sizes you want. So it doesn't even matter. So we're gonna cut it up real rough. And the reason that is, is because we're gonna put the pressure cooker on and blend it at the end. So it honestly doesn't even matter how big or small you cut these pieces. So we've cut up the onion pretty quick. You can now see that the butter is melting and what we can go ahead and do, you don't need to wait for it to get to a certain heat. You can go ahead and start dumping stuff in. So we're gonna dump the jiru and the ground cinnamon. I have ground cinnamon because it's here. If you don't have ground cinnamon, you can actually get a cinnamon stick and pour that in there or throw that in there and leave it there. Um, and I just kind of mix it around so the butter melts with that. And once all the butter's melted, we'll throw the onions in. All right, so the butter is now completely melted. You can see and hear that it's um, bubbling and sizzling a little bit. The cumin is now starting to warm up too. Now you can just chunk the onions in. So you just throw all that. Again, they're all different pieces, as you can see, it doesn't matter. We're gonna cook this until the yellow translucent color comes up, just like when we did the mug. Pretty much that's a rule whenever we're doing any type of onion saute. And I go ahead and throw the garlic in with that. Just spread out the garlic really good and then we'll wait two or three minutes for the onions to cook and become that translucent yellow color. And we'll move to the next step. All right, so the onions are going, we're getting those cooked. I wanted to give you guys a really cool tip for the Instapot. Um, you can get, buy a glass lid for it, but obviously everyone has pots and pans already and you probably already have a glass lid. Just try one and you can see if it fits. I just pulled one out of my drawer and it fits. You can cover it up so the onions cook real quick. While that's happening, I move on to the next vegetable for pambaji, that'd be tomatoes. Again, 
as you can see, I've cut a few up just for example, but they're not perfectly sized. We used to dice these and spend a lot of time with that. I don't do that. So you can just cut big chunks because it's all going to turn into a soup consistency once we're finished. So that's, you can see they're all different sizes, big chunks, and it's going to cook just fine. So once you have your tomatoes cooked, I mean cut up and ready to go, your onions, they're cooked, you can see that they'll be smaller in size, they're that translucent color, you can start smelling the cinnamon um, and the cumin together and it's so yummy. Uh, and that really, really is enticing to start eating, but we're gonna wait. So I'm gonna throw all the tomatoes in. And I didn't get to show you guys the box of the Pambaji mix as an example of what you can find at the Indian store. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that once I stir these onions and tomatoes together and we can throw the rest of the spices in. So this is what you can find at the Indian store. Again, you can pick whichever one you like. This is just the one that my family's used, so I picked that up. Um, but you can find them at any Indian store. So we're gonna go ahead and dump all the rest of the seasoning things. So this is the Pambaji. Uh, mix. We're going to go ahead and pour that in. The salt. Now again, everybody has different likings of salt. And honestly, my way of cooking bambaji is probably not the best or perfect, but you can make your variations and families have their own ways of also making their variations. So you're more than welcome to do whatever variation is suited in your household. I don't want people to think that I have the best way of doing it. It's more about efficiency for me. So I'm giving the fastest tips I can. So you're gonna go ahead and let the onions and tomatoes cook together. I also add half a cup of water into this and that's only to make sure that there's enough water once we add the rest of the um, vegetables in. So I go ahead and add that water in and it's again half a cup of water for the measurements that we're working with today. And we're gonna let that simmer. And once it's simmered, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the vegetables, but we're gonna let it simmer for about four minutes and then the tomatoes will start dispersing water. You'll see that they'll disintegrate as well and then you'll know you're ready to move on. All right, so the tomatoes have now dispersed water and they're smaller in size. And so when you look at the texture of it, you can see that there are still some, but you can see the skin is coming off the tomatoes. You're ready to go with the next few steps and then we're gonna move forward with closing the pressure cooker. So. What I usually do in this instance is I put the lemon. So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze a whole lemon in there. I've already taken the seeds out, so don't worry. Some people like putting the lemon after. Um, I've heard some of my aunts say that if you put lemon afterwards, it keeps the color really nice and rich. Uh, so it's again, your preference and your variations that you can make. I'm just trying to give you guys a faster way of doing it and doing it in the Instapot. So while the lemon is in there, I'm gonna just cover that up. We're gonna cut the potatoes. Now, again, we used to steam the potatoes before and then peel them and then mash them and then throw this in. That is all gone in this process. So we're just gonna cut big, big pieces for the potatoes. Again, there's no rule on how big or how small. Just remember, if you're gonna cut half a potato and just do halves, the timing is gonna be a little bit longer than what I'm gonna show you today. So just know that. Um, so kind of big chunks like this is probably the best way to make it fast. All right, so we can throw the potatoes in. And you can see that the saute function is still on and that means that it's still cooking the um, tomatoes and onions. So the flavors are all still in there mixing up. So you can keep all this on. So we threw the potatoes in. We're gonna throw the cilantro in. I'm gonna cover it up one more time so I can get the cauliflower cut up and then we'll move to the pressure cooker function. The tomatoes are simmering with the potatoes. We're gonna to move to the cauliflower. I've already cut it in half, so mind that. We'll get into smaller pieces in just a minute. I remember when we used to go to India as kids, my family used to take us every other year, and we used to go eat street food, and the way they do it is just so yummy. They have this big, flat iron um, tray that's on a flame, and they just kind of throw all the ingredients in, and it's just so good. It's one of my favorite things. 
to eat there and they give you this fresh bread and it's so, so, so good. So again, nothing scientific on how I cut the cauliflower, but you can throw it all in now. So we're just gonna go ahead and chunk it in. You can break it up if you think it's too big for you, but it should get cooked up pretty fast. Um, so the potatoes are in, onions, tomatoes, soup is in, cilantro is in, all your spices are in there. Get it all spread out evenly and we're gonna move to the next step. So now what we're actually gonna do is you're gonna now use the Instant Pot lid. We're not gonna use the glass lid anymore. We're gonna move over to the actual lid of the Instant Pot. Remember, we're gonna follow how to close it. You'll see the arrow at the top, so you follow that arrow to close. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the saute function because we're done with that. So you're gonna turn it off. You're gonna go to manual. Remember most of the stuff that we're gonna use is in manual. Always make sure it's on high pressure. And then you're gonna set your time. Now, if you use bigger chunks of potatoes, you will probably need to add one to two minutes more to make sure the potatoes are cooked. Because my chunks were a little bit smaller, I usually stick to eight to nine minutes because I know that my chunks will cook fast enough. Um, so again, it's personal preference how big you cut those potatoes, but just keep in mind that your time may change depending on the size of, of that. So now we're on nine minutes. The Instapot knows that it's gonna get to that specific heat for that pressure. Nine minutes it's gonna cook there. It'll count down your time. One reminder I always tell you is to make sure your valve is closed so the steam does not escape. Don't touch it once this silver prong is up. That means this, the, the pressure inside is really high. You just don't wanna touch it then. Just make sure you leave it there and we'll come back when it's ready. All right, so I heard the beeping from upstairs. I'm back and as you can see, um, it, it has turned off because it went to the L functionality and that one means that it's been one minute since the beeping went off. So naturally the steam is being released. Um, again, you know me, I'm in a hurry to eat. So we're gonna take the steam out. You can leave this, if you're working and you did this in the morning and you're not at home, you can leave it like this. The steam will naturally come out. When you come home, it's still gonna be hot. You just open it up and serve it. So whichever way you'd like to do it. So again, releasing the steam, you just push this vent to let the steam out. So we've let the steam out and the silver prong has dropped into the slot. So now you know you can open it. So the next steps are pretty simple. If you have a hand blender, um, that's pretty easy to assemble. You grit that out. It smells so good. It's extremely hot, so be careful when you're messing with this. But you can see that everything's kind of dispersed and that color is like that orangey red color. It's a perfect color. I've assembled my hand blender already. So you can go ahead and get your hand blender, blender in your hand. I would not go all the way down because you might scratch your pot. So I kind of stay at the top and the mid section of it. And you're just gonna go in and blend it. You can do it smooth, you can do it chunky. It's how you prefer. I'm kind of in the mid middle, so I kind of do it to where it's kind of has chunks of potato, chunks of cauliflower. It's truly up to you. So I've blended it down. You can see that there are some small chunks in there. It's up to you. So the next step is the last step and that's basically to throw in your peas. I use frozen peas. Uh, so you mix that in there. Stir it up nice and good. You can see some green color in the pound budgie now. So you're gonna go to your settings and you're just gonna go back because you have frozen peas, you wanna make sure those get cooked. So you're gonna hit cancel. You're gonna go back to your saute mode. Um, here you're gonna sit for two minutes. I'm gonna cover it because it does splash sometimes and we're almost ready to serve. All right, so the two or three minutes are over. We have another guest appearance with Nilani. Can you say hi, Nilani? Say hi. So basically what you're gonna do now, you're gonna turn off the Instapot. Remember that it's still bubbling. So you wanna make sure you're very safe. Let the bubbles simmer down before you open it because you don't want it splashing on you but you're ready to plate this now. And you know it's ready because the peas are floating at the top. It's piping hot, so please be careful when you're taking it out of there. But it smells so good, I can't wait to dig in. 
I'm gonna go ahead and plate that. So there's different variations on what people put on top after they've plated it. And so you can put extra lemon. So we have some extra lemons here. And then we also um, do a little bit of fresh onions, tomatoes, cilantro, and you can throw that on top. And then we are ready to eat some babaji. You want some, Nilani? All right. And there you have it, Bambaji. It's the street food in Mumbai, but it's one of the favorites. I hope you enjoy it. Please make sure you subscribe and check out our recipe right below the video. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm.